full fine petting zoo. <laughs> well, there's people from out there. Don't know. <coughs> it's right a lot of fun to fool with until you lose one. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Appreciate ever being here. Everybody being here at our July 12, 2022, Madison <coughs> County Fiscal Court meeting. This time, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Clerk Barger, if you will, please call the roll. Master Robinson here. Master Barger here. <coughs> Master Tudor here. Master Bakken present. Judge Taylor here. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, my friend Leonard Bratcher up from Red Lake Baptist Church to lead us in a word of prayer. Also, Leonard served as on our Madison Southern or Southern Madison Water Board. So appreciate your service and appreciate what you mean to the community down here, Leonard. Appreciate all y'all too. Let us pray. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this beautiful day thanking you, dear God, for all your many blessings upon us. Lord, we just ask you now to be at uh, this meeting, dear God. We just pray, Lord, that everything will go according to your will. Lord, thank you for our government. Lord, we just pray for each leader, dear God, that you'll just guide them in the way that they sh should go and just to help the people in the community in the United States, dear Lord. Lord, we just pray, dear God, for each one of our special uh, first responders, dear God. We pray, dear Lord, that you just put your protecting hand around them, Lord, and keep them safe, dear Lord, as they're on the highways today. Lord, we pray a special prayer for the families in Floyd County that they had the disaster, dear Lord, last week. Dear God, we pray that you'd comfort them. Again, we ask you, dear Lord, to be at this meeting, meet each member here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> Thank you, Leonard. Sheriff, if you will, lead us in. If everyone would please stand and raise their flag. Excuse me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. <coughs> Thanks, Sheriff. Thanks, Sheriff. <coughs> uh, next is approval of our meeting minutes from our previous meeting. That was the June 14th. Motion to approve the minutes as presented to us, Judge. Second. This is one after the 14th of 2018. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't believe it was June 14th minutes. That have been two meetings ago. 28. 28. 28. Yes, sir. Yeah. Do you all have the 28th minute? Did you have 28th minutes in your drop box? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I just have the wrong minutes in my packet, which is good. So you made a motion? Yes. And we have a second? Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? <coughs> all in. <laughs> I was getting ready to say all in favor because the PDB meeting, I don't have somebody call the roll. <laughs> you can go right ahead. <laughs> I'll just sit here and watch. <laughs> Clerk Barger, call the roll. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bachman? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thank you all. Uh, first on our agenda today is an update from our corner, Jimmy Cornelison. Jimmy, it's always a pleasure to see you. Appreciate what you do for our community. Appreciate what you mean to our community. I appreciate that, Judge. Members of Fiscal Court. Uh, just going to run a few numbers by you just to kind of let you know what, what we're looking at right now. Uh, 2019, I had 52 overdose deaths, 2020, 59, 2021, 75. And so far this year, I've had 31 and got two pending, um, which, you know, if, the, if that trend keeps on, we may drop below the 75, which I hope. Uh, what What is influenced that? I think there's a couple of things. One thing that people, I don't think, realize is more people have Narcan. Uh, they're being narcan up. It doesn't mean they're saving their lives. But they're bringing these people into the hospitals and they're being transferred to UK, which we've talked about before. And in essence, they're making them organ donors, you know, if they can keep them alive on a respirator or something like that. So I see in the hospital, sometimes will call me and tell me they have somebody in ICU that they're getting ready to withdraw any care from. Um, so that, make, that makes a big difference. Uh, I think also probably not the availability of free money, if you will, if, I don't know if that's a correct term, but you know, when you give money away, it's free, um, that uh, maybe some of these people aren't getting, and that may be having some influence on it. Um, had a little upswing in the last two or three weeks, uh, had several deaths, and like I said, I've got two pending right now, and 
other than that. A couple other things just to bring to your attention. Um, so far this year, I've had 66 bodies in the morgue. That's a bunch. You know, uh, I'm very fortunate to have the facilities that I have, the walk-in cooler, which when other corners come to Madison County and, and I take them down there or they come, funeral homes come to pick up a body from us, you know, without that, I don't know what we do. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had nine in there. Uh, right now, I think I've got two, but it's just in and out. Why is that happening? People die, either they don't have anybody or the anybody that they have don't have a clue on what to do. You know, are we gonna cremate? Are we gonna bury them? I don't have any money, that sort of thing. So uh, obviously it falls back on the corner and physical court and uh, Judge Taylor and I stay in contact about that. We made some changes from last year as far as um, uh, some cremations and things like that, which has worked out extremely well. And uh, we're just uh, making it go. Everything <coughs> is, I've still got my three deputies. Everything seems to be uh, running pretty well. Just busy, just busy. But the numbers here with the two pending, and I feel, I feel certain they'll, they will be overdoses. That'll be 33. And that is probably up till, well, I had one, yeah. Anyway, about six months in, something like that. Is there any questions I can answer for you or? Jimmy, the individuals you were talking about that, uh, you know, get Narcan and go to the hospital might be in ICU. And, right. Uh, they're going to st stop care. Right, right. Uh, at that point, and they become an organ donor, are they not at that point considered an overdose? Well, the, Would they still be in your overdose numbers? And, or? That, and that's a good question, Judge. The answer to your question is no. When they go into the hospital, if they go under direct physician's care, in other words, a doctor takes their case and they're put in the ICU or they're put on the floor or something like that, very seldom, and I've had this discussion before, uh, I, I'm never informed about it. Uh, now, it goes down somewhere as, a, as an overdose, obviously, uh, and it's an overdose from your county, uh, but it does not go in mind. The numbers that I have are people that either myself or my deputies have pronounced dead okay you know and that's uh i don't know what the numbers would 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 be with that but uh the, the only thing that they will call me on if it's maybe um a suspected homicide or something like that then we'll you know contact the county attorney's office or, or whatever and we'll, we'll go from there we'll start that process on what we need to do and um the the thing and, and i'm dealing with it i was telling uh, major terry just a few minutes ago with a, a, a case from this weekend and it appears to be a suicide it's from a different county it gets brought into our county why is that because we have the hospitals and then when when they're brought into our county um, we don't know the families we don't go to the scene because we don't know where the scene is and we rely on law enforcement to do these certain things and and sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't it depends on who's doing the job uh, then the next thing you know, it's a call, which I've already received, that it's a homicide. Which, you know, I'll have to determine what we're gonna do from there. But that, it, there, there's a whole lot more to that ball of yarn than, than what probably people would realize. But uh, I think we handled it pretty well. Try to anyway, try to satisfy everybody the best we can. Obviously, as I was speaking to the county attorney er earlier, I can't satisfy everybody. <laughs> That's a different case. But anyway, <laughs> it's been going on for three years, so yeah. it, it's okay. It's okay. Jimmy, can a case ever be considered homicide if someone else gives them the drugs? Yes, of course. Okay. Watch her look at me. I knew it. Uh, here, here's here's here's. Uh, Master Tudor, here, here's, here's the problem, or here, here's what, how this works. Uh, if, if we feel like that and we have proof, you know, the police take telephones. They can take the telephones down. They can, you know, get a search warrant, download, do whatever they want to do. And, you know, if, if, if I'm texting Mike Cole and saying, hey, I, you know, I've got a dime bag, or if you want to you buy this, you want to buy that, or whatever, then can they use that against them? Absolutely. Is, is it hard to prove? Uh, well, the proof's in the 
proof is in the pudding. Um, um, some people are real aggressive. I'm trying to be delicate here. Some 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 uh, cases are, are you know we aggressively try to go after and some uh, don't okay and I'll just leave it at that okay that's has nothing to do with me nothing to do with the county attorney uh, it, it's just that there are situations where that um, even even on even on a homicide a homicide from 1993 in this county that I work as a deputy that I have a lot of information uh, on who did the murder and everything, you know, and I even brought it to, to uh, Major Terry's attention once, and his answer to me was, you got no physical evidence. You know, and you walk around and you know somebody's committed a murder and, and you can't even hit them with a stick. But, um, you know, it's, it, it's twisted. And I, I will tell you this, I do not count, call the county attorney's office unless I need them, and every time I've needed them, they have provided for me in a, in a very good manner. I want you to know that. I know I say that every time I come, but I, I use you all through the year, and I don't, if I email somebody, I get something back right then. Because, you know, I'm dealing with families who want, you know, they still think that, like on CSI, <coughs> that in a commercial break, I can get a DNA. You know, the case. It, it's amazing. They're the worst things the that ever happened to law enforcement. I don't care in, what the people say. 30, 30 they, minutes. They, they, they are the worst things. And, and well, why can't you do that? You know, how come it's going to take a month to get an autopsy report? I send them to a medical examiner, and I talked to a medical examiner on a case <coughs> Sunday morning, and she said, I have no idea. It may be two months. I've just done six autopsies this morning. One person, six autopsies. And you know the paperwork that comes back with those is it can depending on what it is can be unbelievable. So, uh, but we work well with those folks up there too, and uh, runs pretty smooth, or it has been running pretty smooth for us. Jimmy, I see that every day that all the departments throughout the county work good together and cooperate and share information, right? right. To help each other out. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if 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 we separate, we're not going to get any any bad guys and in jail number one and, and that, that's not my purpose my purpose is manner and cause of death but it happens that bad guys sometimes fall in that category so you know we deal them and deal with them and of course we we had a couple of murders last year that that are you know still pretty high on the level on what we're going to do and things like that but it, it'll all come we'll, we'll get it we'll get it all done at one point in time you know, we certainly appreciate everything you do over there and there's a lot of different pieces to the puzzle and we've addressed some of that before right. uh, in previous courts yes sir uh, you know prevention um, right. rehab um, the different things like that I was happy to see just within the last day or two it was either passed or they're addressing now that uh, distribution of fentanyl conviction I saw that this morning sir are yeah. gonna go to uh, having to serve 85 percent of their uh, sentence out instead of 50 yeah, percent so you know eight. i've said along along when the penalty's stiff enough they'll stop you or at least slow down so right. hope, you know hopefully that helps with that yeah we don't want to talk about penalties do we no sir <laughs> <laughs> we don't want but, to talk but, about <laughs> i'm sorry but but anyway uh and, and, and i agree with you and and but the bottom line though, <coughs> still is and i think if you talk to the sheriff or uh, major terry or, or, or whoever you know if they don't want help folks we can't force it upon them I want to help them all, but I mean, you know, if, if I go into a house and it's an overdose and there's two or three people sitting around and they're trying to jerk a tear out from somewhere, but their eyes are glassy as that bulb up there, uh, they're higher than a Georgia pine themselves. Right. You know, and I've even talked to them. I said, you know, you're going to be next. See that green bag? That's what I'm going to put you in. But it doesn't, sometimes it just doesn't register. So um, I just save a bag. Judge, if I can, just Absolutely. Quickly. Sure. Um, and I, I probably do sound like a broken record every time we get to have Jimmy come speak with us, but I will say <coughs> um, Madison County is really blessed to have him. Absolutely. Um, the work he does, I, don't get me wrong, I love working with all of you, <laughs> um, but I will say Jimmy's one of my favorite. Um, he's a leader in the state and the nation and what he does and yeah. the sacrifices that he makes for the people in this county people will never know yeah, um, we we, we probably agree on a p positions a majority of the time 
And if we ran the world, maybe it'd be a better place, but <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't get to make all the decisions. Um, but he, he really, his family as well, the sacrifices his family makes, they, they're all really wonderful people and Madison County is truly blessed to have him. So. I appreciate those words. And, and I know you guys don't hear, and ladies don't hear this very often, um, but I think in this year's uh, uh, budget, we got a raise, didn't we, Judge? We certainly got a raise. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, as a director of the ambulance service, you know, for many, many years, um, I would give a, give a raise what I thought was what we could afford and do that. And there was always a couple of people who would call me and thank me out of about 50, hmm. you know? And so with that, I, I, I told my wife this morning that I, what I was gonna do is thank you all, okay? Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. It, it is, you know, it, it, on your all's part, because I know money's tight and everything else, but uh, if nobody else has told you that, Jimmy has. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. So, so Jimmy, quick comment. Um, I'd like to echo, you know, some of the responses that others have made. I think that, you know, the, the work that you do is thankless, uh, but it gets done professionally. Um, and <clears throat> when you look at, you know, short-term challenges, you know, what do you have? And, and, and also, what what do you need from us right from the fiscal court well and and the judge is trying to help me now we've we've come back and forth with uh, uh, federal people and everything about getting another transport van the one I've got is it I got, I got it for before you were here right yeah mm -hmm. right and uh, it's uh, it's two-wheel drive van and in the winter time it can't go I right. mean places I go he can't go and I can't leave the body there you know um, during the night of the ice, ice storm uh, I went way out in the county out toward home and to get a body uh, of, of overdose and no way the van would get there and we brought the young man back in the back of a pickup truck now in a body bag and we covered it that's all I could do right. Right. so we're trying to look for maybe a four-wheel drive something um, we've tried to go through um, CCEP a couple of times and I haven't heard anything. Have you heard anything at all, Judge? Uh, I'm supposed to hear something this week. This week? Okay, good. And trying to uh, fulfill that. But I appreciate you asking that question and I won't hesitate uh, to, to, to ask for what I think is needed. But I will just tell you, my facilities uh, are the envy of 99% of the coroner's offices Absolutely. in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I mean, I've got a great place. A lot of people don't know where it's at. I'm going to keep it just that <laughs> way. You know, I don't have to worry about a lot of media or stuff like that sometimes. But uh, if, we, if we ever have, and I hope that this doesn't happen, but, you know, I was talking to uh, Major Terry, and we've talked about, you know, things that happen are in our schools, in our churches, and, and I hope and pray nothing like that ever happens, but I believe if it did happen, uh, will be as prepared as you can be. Nobody's completely prepared for something like that. Yeah. You know, you're not prepared for a double homicide, you know, because of with, with what all it brings, but you, you, you handle it. And we are all the time uh, trying to prepare for that. Just, I mean, this last two weeks, I've been bidding out body bags. I know that sounds like, what in the world do you do? Well, you know, if you buy them in bulk, you get them a lot cheaper and we'll eventually use them. So that's what I've, I've uh, talked to some people again this week about them and uh, you know what I can buy, if I just buy 10 at a time, what they cost me a piece uh, is $10 or $15 higher than what if I bought 50 or 100, Yeah. okay? So, and I have the room to keep them. Most people <coughs> wouldn't have the room to keep them, I do. So that's what we're working on right now, one of the things we're working on. Well, Jimmy, thank you. Okay, anybody else? Thank you. God bless you. Appreciate, Thank you. appreciate Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Appreciate Jimmy. what you do. Um, next on our agenda is Resolution 2022-92. It's a Valley View Ferry Board appointment, a resolution for the appointment of the Madison County Fiscal Court to the Valley View Ferry Board, whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court is responsible for the appointment of the Valley View Ferry Board members, and whereas the Valley View Ferry Board has a vacant board member position, and whereas the Mass County Fiscal Court has found Ashley Hatton as fit for the position as board member of the Valley View Ferry Board. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Fiscal Court does hereby approve Ashley Hatton as a Valley View Ferry Board member. 
I need a motion and a second to approve. So moved. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, Judge, I just, I just think she'll be a good fit. She's uh, from down in that area and uh, knows a lot of people because of the grocery store that she's at. And uh, she can be a big help about getting the word out if the ferry's down or whatever, you know. Uh, I think she'll make a, a good fit. So, Judge, just, just for my, you know, kind of uh, Valley View Ferry Board, you know, appointment here, what is the length of this term? <coughs> Uh, this term will expire on May 9th, 2025. Okay. Thank you. It's generally a four-year term, though, isn't it? Sir? Yeah. Yeah. You start yeah. from the beginning. Yeah, but I think, um, she, I think she's filling a, another yeah. position. Right. Gotcha. She's already. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that, <coughs> the ferry is made up of three counties, basically, Fayette, Jessamine, yes, and Madison. Madison. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, Ben, we always have a representative from the district, which is Rogers District, mm -hmm. on that board as the magistrate serve mm -hmm. on that board. And we have a couple. I think uh, we have two, and then yeah. Raj yeah. as, as a, a fiscal court member, you know, as a magistrate, he's, he sits on the board as well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything else? Any other comments? Hearing none, call the roll. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Judge yes. Taylor? Yes. Uh, next, Resolution 2022-93. This is a Justice Assistant Grant, also known as the JAG Grant, application for fiscal year 2022. And we have our very own Tony Terry with us. Good morning. Hi, buddy. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, this is basically a request for application for us and uh, Rich City of Richmond to enter into a um, an application for Justice Assistance Grant, called a JAG Grant for Law Enforcement. Whereas the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistant Grant Program allows units of local government to support a broad range of criminal justice related activities based on their own local needs and conditions. And whereas the Madison County Physical Court, Kentucky desires to make an application for the fiscal year 2022 JAG Grant Program Award. And whereas the County of Madison, Kentucky wishes to authorize the judge executive and or his designee to make application for the fiscal year 2022 JAG Grant Program Award, and if the application is successful, to enter into an agreement with the Office of Justice Programs to administer this JAG Program Award to execute any documents which are deemed necessary to facilitate and administer the award, to enter and into a local agreement with the City of Richmond to equally share the award, to act as the authorized correspondent for this award, and whereas the fiscal year 2022 JAG Grant Award amount allocation is ten thousand ninety four dollars which will be split equally between madison county and the city of richmond via an interlocal agreement and whereas there is no local match required all right y'all have heard resolution 2022-93 i need a motion and a second to approve make a motion to approve 2022-93 uh, second <coughs> Have a motion to second. Do we have any discussion? So I just have a question, uh, Major Terry. Would you tell the public what it is in the past that you have used this grant for? Sure. Um, well, as it says, we split this grant with the city of Richmond, and it's our year to apply for it. Uh, but in the past and, and this year, um, we use it for tasers, uh, vests, weapons, any type of equipment that will better law enforcement needs. Um, and like I said, this year, I think uh, we'll be asking for four tasers, three or four tasers, whatever we can get with $5,000. Right. And those tasers, you know, I think most people probably don't know. It's in my career of law enforcement, 30 plus years, it's probably been the best um, invention tool that law enforcement can have. I mean, it saved countless number of lives. So uh, that, that's what our intentions are to use with it. We've been pretty successful in the past in getting this grant as well, haven't we? Yes. I don't know that we've. I think we. I don't know that we've never. We've yeah. gotten it since Sheriff and I have yeah. been there probably yeah. at least eight or ten years. Yeah, that I know of. Since we've all been here as a court, I don't think yes, we've sir. never not received it. Yeah. And when your treasure's nodding her head, it means it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, all right, any more discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Next is Resolution 2022-94. Uh, this is a Justice, Justice Assistance Grant JAG Interlocal Agreement. So this is the interlocal agreement with the City of Richmond. <clears throat> Uh, resolution 2022-94, a resolution to enter into an interlocal agreement between the County of Madison, Kentucky and the City of Richmond, Kentucky for the two fiscal year 2022 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant, another one, otherwise known as JAG. Whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court desires to enter into an interlocal agreement between the County of Madison, Kentucky, here and after referred to as the County, and the City of Richmond, Kentucky, here and after referred to as the City. And whereas the county agrees to serve as the applicant fiscal agent for the fiscal year 2022 JAG grant program award. And whereas each governing body finds that the performance of this agreement is in the best interest of both parties, that the undertaking will benefit the public and that the division of costs fairly compensates the performing party for the services or functions under this agreement, which is attached here to this resolution. And whereas the county agrees to provide the city $5,047 from the fiscal year 2022 JAG program award of $10,094 to be used by the Richmond Police Department. And the county agrees to use the remaining $5,047 from the fiscal year 2022 JAG program award for the Madison County Sheriff's Department. Now therefore be it resolved that the fiscal court does hereby approve this resolution and authorizes the judge executive and or his designee to execute same on behalf of the county. Motion approved resolution 2022-94, Judge. Second. Thank you all. Any discussion? Yeah, just a quick question. H has, have we ever done this with the city of Berea or has it always been just city of Richmond? As far as I know, it's been the city of city Richmond. City of Richmond, yeah. Okay. Could the city of Berea do this as well <laughs> if they wanted to? It's a good question. Oh. I'm not sure. That'd be a good question for Tom Webb. Tom Webb, our, uh, or a grants writer, mm -hmm. usually the one that <coughs> writes and knows all the terms of the grants. Yeah, I'm just looking at it from a, you know, from a, uh, you know, from a mon monetary standpoint. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, five thousand ninety-four dollars is great, but I think you could probably use ten, right? <laughs> okay. And I don't know if 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 this <coughs> community is allocated the ten thousand, so. If the city of Bury wanted, it could be cut three ways instead gotcha. of two. Gotcha. Um, yeah. But, I mean, the, the city of Bury is more than welcome to entertain the thought and maybe contact Tom Webb and, and see if what the what they would have to do to, to apply. We can vet it. I can vet it a little bit, too, with Tom. I mean, I don't know, but it always has been with the Richmond. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd like to see if it, we do include Berea that maybe we increase the amount of the grant to 15000 so each. Yeah, I don't think five. we get a choice on that. They yeah, I think that's right. a It's not what yeah. we we ask for as much as we can get, yeah. but that's what because every year it's different. Sometimes we get eleven, sometimes we've gotten fifteen, uh, whatever they allocate us. But if, if they see it's going to serve more communities, maybe they could up it. They might. Hey, Robin, would you care to make a note of that for me? Thank you. I see you writing down there. I figured that's what you've done. <laughs> yeah, she's thank good. you, Judge. Appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question. Yep. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All right, hearing none, call the roll, please. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Botkin? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. All right, next is uh, Resolution 2022-95. It's a Kentucky Animal Control Advisory Board Spay and Neuter Grant application. Good morning, Morgan. Good morning. A resolution for application and administration of 2022 Kentucky Department of Agriculture Animal Control Advisory Board Spay and Neuter Grant Funds, whereas the Kentucky Animal Control Advisory Board is accepting applications for the 2022 Spay and Neuter Grant Program, and whereas funds for the 2022 Kentucky Animal Control Advisory Board Spay and Neuter Grant Program are to be awarded on a competitive basis for spaying and neutering companion animals, and whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court Kentucky desires to make an application for the 2022 Kentucky Animal Control Advisory Board Grant Program funds to spay and neuter companion animals in Madison County, 
and whereas the County of Madison, Kentucky wishes to authorize the judge executive and or his designee to make application for these 2022 Kentucky Animal Control Advisory Board Spay and Neuter Companion Grant Program funds, and if the application is successful to enter into an agreement with the Kentucky Animal Control Advisory Board to administer this award, to execute any documents which are deemed necessary to facilitate and administer this award, to act as the authorized correspondent for this award, and whereas the Kentucky Animal Control Advisory Board will award up to $3,000 to applicants on a competitive basis, and whereas local funding is considered in the scoring of these grant applications, but a local match is not required, and whereas Madison County Fiscal Court is requesting Kentucky Animal Control Advisory Board grant funds in the amount of $3,000 in our grant application, now therefore be it resolved this 12th day of July, 2022, by Madison County, Kentucky, the judge executive and or his designee is hereby authorized to execute and furnish all required documentation, including memorandum of agreements, as may be required for the furtherance of the above reference project and to act as the authorized correspondent for said project. Thanks, Morgan. Do I have a motion and a second for resolution 2022-95? Good, I'd like to make a motion. We approve resolution 2022-95. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Master Berger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thanks, Morgan. Uh, next, resolution 2022-96. Uh, this is the ASPCA Foundation Disaster Response Grant Application. Yes. Good morning. Again. Good morning. Uh, resolution for application and administration of the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, otherwise known as the ASPCA, Foundation Disaster <coughs> Response Grant Program Funds. Whereas the ASPCA Foundation is currently accepting applications for their Disaster Response Grant Program, and whereas funds for the ASPCA Foundation Disaster Response Grant Program are to be awarded on a competitive basis for capacity building and preparedness. And whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court, Kentucky, desires to make an application for the ASPCA Foundation Disaster Response Grant Program funds. And whereas the County of Madison, Kentucky, wishes to authorize the Judge Executive to make application for the ASPCA Foundation Disaster Response Grant Program funds. And if the application is successful, to enter into an agreement with the ASPCA Foundation to administer this award to execute, execute any documents which are deemed necessary to facilitate and administer this award and to act as the authorized correspondent for this award. And whereas the ASPCA Foundation will award up to 100,000 to applicants on a competitive basis and whereas a local match is not required and whereas Madison County Fiscal Court is requesting ASPCA Foundation disaster response grant funds in an amount which will be specified <coughs> in the grant application currently being prepared for submittal. Now, therefore, be it resolved this 12th day of July 2022 by Madison County, Kentucky, the judge executive and or his designee is hereby authorized to execute and furnish all required documentation, including memorandum of agreements as may be required for the furtherance of the above reference project and to act as the authorized correspondent for this said project. Thank you, Glenna. Do I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 2022-96? We'll move. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, quick question. Um, <coughs> you know, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm all for grants and, and all that stuff, and I think it's great, and it's, it's money that's, that's well needed. Uh, and my question is, do we have, you know, as a county, do we have a grant writer? Uh, that writes them for us and my next question is um, uh, normally when grants are written by a third party if that's what we use is there a percentage of that money that goes to the grant writer himself if we're successful no so uh, we actually <coughs> contract yearly with a grant with a grant writer okay um, and uh, his name's Tom Webb okay um, and he's been our contracted grant writer for um, Three years? I was going to say two, probably three. Three years now? Yeah. Okay. Um, Cheryl, Cheryl Cross used to be our grant writer. Okay. Um, and so we play, we pay a flat fee a year right. um, for their services to Mass County Fiscal Court. And gotcha. so we're we're shooting grants at them all the time. To, okay. um, and, and so far, I have to say that I'm proud of, and I'm sure it even goes back before my time, is we've never lost money. Okay. You know, we've always brought in a lot more money in grants than what we've actually had to pay for that contract. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And and not only do they do the grant writing, but they follow through with the grants, make sure we're following all the 
because uh, it's a full-time job once Absolutely. you get awarded a grant to make sure you're following all the rules plus they help with the audits when they come in and audit uh, that grant writer will provide the documentation and everything that's needed it's kind of the tricky thing about taxpayer dollars right <laughs> got to got to spend a little to to get those grants absolutely yeah. absolutely and i'm all for it yeah. I, I was just kind of questioning the you know the uh you know the mechanics of it yeah thank you when uh when uh magistrate robertson was sick i believe may have been one of the courts that we approved we were yeah renewed it mm -hmm. this year yeah. okay mm -hmm. Glenda, correct me if I'm wrong, but through CSIP, do we not have a trailer for homeless pets uh, that are displaced because of a disaster? Oh, we do have a, a trailer that was just purchased last year or the year before um, that we can use. We not only can use that for its for disasters, mm -hmm. but we can also use it when we do adoption events and stuff like that to trailer several animals at one time. So yes, the CSEP did did provide us with that. Okay, that's what I think. Yep. All right, good discussion. Any other discussion? No, sir. Hearing none, call the roll. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thank you, Glenna. Uh, next is personnel in the road department. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. Uh, excited today to bring a recommendation of Miss Susie Payne, and she's with us today. Uh, we'd like to hire for her for office assistant full time. Uh, proposed salary be fourteen dollars, and start date is actually today after court if she's approved. <laughs> Motion to approve Susie Payne as the office assistant of the road department at uh, fourteen dollars an hour, beginning on seven twelve twenty two, Judge. Second. Second. All right. Got a motion in three seconds. So <laughs> it's a good sign. Yeah, it's a good sign. Judge, I'd just like to say I was in the Scott's office yesterday and she was shadowing Melissa in there trying to get a first hand look on what her responsibilities would be. And if somebody's that dedicated, I think they'll do well for the job. Agreed. And I concur. Yeah. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All right. Hearing none, call the roll. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, welcome, Scott. Welcome Susie. aboard, Susie. That's right. Welcome aboard. Good to have you. Look forward to working with you. All right, next, judge's report. I've just got a few announcements. I've got a lot of events going on around the community. Uh, the Brea Festival of Learn Shops is celebrating their 10th anniversary on July the 15th. Uh, through the 24th, contact Brea Tourism for class topics, times, and, and details. Uh, White Oak Pond Christian Church is having a Christmas in July craft show on Saturday, July 16th, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the church at the corner of Barnes Mill Road and Goggins Lane. Uh, the, <laughs> the Madison County Farmers Market will also be set up there. Uh, Richmond's First <laughs> United Methodist Church is hosting a Ukraine family night on Friday, July 15th, from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, contact the church for required tickets. Uh, Dominion Senior Living is hosting a pick on the Picking on the Porch summer concert series on Saturday, July 16th from 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, bring a chair and enjoy the music with your family and friends. And you can also follow uh, up on more details on their Facebook page. Again, that's Dominion Senior Living. The Richmond Area Arts Council will be hosting their Blues, Soul, and Barbecue on Sunday, July 17th from 5 until 8 p.m. at Chinook Vineyards on Barnes Mill Road. Uh, required tickets may be purchased at the Richmond Area Arts Council website or by calling 624-4242. Uh, no tickets will be sold at the door. Uh, the St. Joseph Hospital in Berea is hosting a walk to remember um, those, those lost to COVID on Saturday, July the 23rd, beginning at 9 a.m. at their facility here in Berea at the Berea Hospital. Uh, contact St. Joseph Hospital Berea for more information. And then there will be also a Nature Family Day uh, on Saturday, Ju July the 23rd uh, at Taylor's Fork. Please contact Richmond Parks and Recreation for more information and to register for that event. A lot of, a lot of things happening in our community, which is a good thing. Uh, next, comments from magistrates. Ben, how about uh, I start with you today? Start with me, that's fine. Um, Great meeting. It was great to hear from uh, uh, Coroner Knielsen uh, and some of the headwinds and challenges that he has. And I know that uh, uh, he and his staff are some of the best in the business. 
they absolutely are. Absolutely. Um, also, uh, I've received many phone calls on, on various roads and, and streets within the county that are here in District 1, and I can promise you I talked with uh, Scott Shepard today, and he's been looking at some of them, and, you know, I wish that we could pave them all, uh, but there's not necessarily the funds to do that. So everybody be patient. There's still a lot of work to be done uh, this summer going as well as this summer and going into the fall. So, you know, give those road crews, you know, the opportunity to do what they're doing and uh, they're doing it for your benefit. So thank you. Thank you. Rod. Uh, Ken, you happened to ask about the uh, ferry and it is closed uh, in case you didn't know it, but uh, uh, we're down to one captain, uh, but that's not one of the reasons it's closed is, is for repairs. It's just repairs that we couldn't wait until we pulled the boat out of the water. They had to be done now, so that, that shut it down. But while it was shut down already, uh, we lost one of our captains. So we're down to one captain. Uh, these captains has to have a Coast Guard license. Uh, we've got a deck hand that's real close to getting his license. He's, you know, he's got to go take the test, but he's been uh, studying for it for quite a bit, and, and they feel like that he'll pass it. And that, that would help us. But uh, until then, this one captain, they, he and the other captain worked a week at a time. So he comes in and works his week. And then if he's got something already planned or whatever, we can't make him stay and work. But uh, in the past, what we've tried to do, as I was telling Kenny, uh, to get people to work, if he will come in like from 6 to 9 o'clock and get them to work, we've done our job. We feel like to help them out to get to work. And they can, you know, they can figure out whichever way they can get back home. But uh, until that, till we can get another captain, that's 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 what we'll be. We'll be maybe open a week and down a week. But uh, hopefully, this this uh, deckhand will uh, get his license and, and relieve us a little bit. Anybody could run the ferry. It's it's a matter. It runs of, on a cable, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but Coast Guard says you've got to have that Coast Guard license, and that's one of the drawbacks to being with the Coast Guard, but the safety part of it's well worth what we have to go through to to do it. So that's all I got. I just want to inform everybody, uh, and, and and I hope we, we've we not, it's not in concrete that we can do the six to nine of the morning yet, you know, so don't don't go down there in the morning thinking you can. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Raj. Okay. John. Raj, you, uh, you're retiring. You make a great captain down there. Mm -hmm. You've been okay. on that board long enough. You ought to know how to run the boat by now. I've, I've had enough. Yeah. <laughs> one, one more question. What, what is the average daily travel on that uh, ferry? Number-wise, uh -huh. it'll vary, but it's probably from uh, as low as probably 100 and some to 200 and some every day. That's, that's pretty heavily traveled, oh, yeah. though. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you for what yeah. you're doing. Uh, don't have a lot, Judge. I've been out uh, on our county roads, and it's, it's good to see that uh, – we have uh, broadband expansion on a lot of rural areas in the county that you would thought would never happen. So uh, it is coming. It's just going to give us take us a little time to get it completely covered throughout the entire county. So I get I get calls why we got dead spots or whatever, and I say, well, we have a company, uh, All Points Broadband, that has promised to fill in the gaps where, where we don't have coverage. So uh, eventually, everyone in the county should have uh, access broadband which is it was a great thing uh, I know the little rain showers we've had is has helped him a little bit on the grass fires it was getting awful dry and, and uh, we need a little more rain but uh, uh, with uh, grass fields getting really dry Tim is going to be a lot busier than what he normally is and appreciate what he does for the county uh, I talked with Scott this week or actually yesterday and uh, Got a little update on some of the roads that uh, he and I have recommended that get black topped uh, from our flex fund this fall. So we, we've got a little money to spend on some a few uh, roads in the 3rd District this fall, and those will be happening. About all I got, Judge. Thanks, buddy. Tom. Uh, just a couple, Judge. The, uh, just to echo what John said, you know, we're working on the black top list. We don't have a lot of money, and uh, as I've said in the past, the absolute worst roads will get the black top money. So, you know, feel free to call me and if you're concerned about your road, and I already know about a lot of them, but I'm still willing to listen to anybody that wants to call. Uh, I want to take it just a second, um, Scott, and thank Melissa. Uh, I had some 
concerns about one of the uh, charges that was on the um, the claims yesterday and I called her and she pulled out the receipts on it and got me feeling better about that so I appreciate that I know it takes time away and I think she might have even been uh, interviewing yesterday when I was doing that but I, I appreciate her time uh, for helping us out with that um, judge anybody that needs to get a hold of me they can reach me at 200 9765 Thank you, Tom. Kenny? Yeah. Kenny? No, sir. Sheriff? No, sir. You good? All right. <coughs> Comments from department heads. Any department heads need to address the court today? I just have one thing. Um, our audit for the 2021 C, uh, fiscal year did get released. Um, the public, anybody wants to look at it, it is on our website under transparency, under audits. Um, it is also on the state auditor's website. Um, there were no comments in the audits. It was really good. So if anyone would like to see it, the public would like to see it, that's, we do have it posted. And you emailed it to all the magistrates? I did email it to all the magistrates. And if you would like a printed copy, just let me know and I can get it for you. You can stop by and pick it up or yep. whatever. It's good. Thanks, Glenn. Any other department heads? Comments from the audience? Leonard's the only one left. <laughs> Still hanging in there. All right. Uh, next, I need a motion to pay the claims and prove the transfers. So moved. So moved. We got a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Berger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Botkin? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Our next meeting will be July the 26th, 2022, at 9.30 in the morning, right back uh, at our Mass County Fiscal Courtroom in Richmond. Again, that'll be July 26th, 2022, 9.30, back in Richmond at the Mass County courthouse fiscal courtroom i need a motion to second to adjourn move to adjourn second call the roll please master Berger. yes master tudor yes master botkin yes master robinson yes judge taylor yes thank you all appreciate everybody being here hey uh, chief could i see you just